Metamorism. Good golly gosh, I love the sound of that word. Metamorism. Right. Metamorism. Well, metamorism. Uh, hello? I never heard of that. Many of us have seen viewing booths like this with three different lights in them, and we associate the word metamorism with these booths. Unfortunately, that's not the case. This is not metamorism. This shows color inconstancy, the fact that colors change as the lighting changes. Metamorism is when two objects match under one light, but not under another. For example, here we see two swatches of a lovely purple, or lavender, or violet, or um, periwinkle. I don't know what color it is, but we've got these two colors here. They match perfectly under this incandescent light. And here we see under sunlight that they don't match anymore. What a bizarre phenomena. You might just be familiar with one example of a metameric pair. Here we see the REM indicator. This has been printed with two different types of ink. Positions 1, 3, and 5 are one ink, and positions 2 and 4 are the other. In the middle, we see what this looks like under D50. It's a perfect match. But if we look at this under incandescent light, or cool white fluorescent light, we see that the patches are a different color. Here's another example. This came out from Ugra. And here we see the Pantone version of this that's in the most recent Pantone book. All of these can be used to determine whether or not we have D50 lighting. A crude device, but it just may work. When I first saw the REM indicator in, I don't know, 1850 or whatever it was, I was under the impression that those were kind of like special colors that uh, metamorized, that the purple or the, uh, the brownish color, the greens, that all of those were uh, rare exceptions to the world. But that's not really the case. I have here another example of a metamer. This is a picture inside a building on campus at Clemson, and the colors in the ink here are all metameric matches to the color of the inside of this building. And it's not just Clemson. That's also true of my alma mater. All of the colors in this magazine are metamers, metameric matches to the reality that was photographed. In the case of printing, metamers are really our friends because Without metamers, we would not be able to make good, faithful color reproductions of anything. Then again, metamers can be our enemies. Another indication that you might have from looking at those lighting indicators is that they occur in pairs. Metamers are only pairs. Well, here's a set of metameric sextuplets that I gave birth to a few years ago. Lovely, aren't they? Holy complications! Oh, ha, let me try to explain this graph here. This is a plot of the spectra of six different inks. One of them is real and the other are hypothetical that I created in a spreadsheet. The dashed line is an actual measurement of Pantone 147. And the rest of these, well, let's take a look at the uh, red line there. The red line uh, follows kind of close to the dashed line. That's what you would get if you were to use Flexo inks with CMYK to try to duplicate that Pantone color. Okay, that's a pretty good spectral match. Let's have a look at the blue line now. The blue line represents a spectrum of what we might get if we use the Indigo digital printer to create that same Pantone 147. What we see compared to the dashed line is that it's got all kinds of wiggles. But somehow, under D50, this winds up looking exactly the same. You may not be familiar with the Go book. That is Pantone's replacement for the Pantone matching system guide. Go is better in every way, and that's why it was discontinued. But if you start off with the Go inks, you have that green line, which kind of looks like it 
wobbles up and down opposite from the blue line. Huh. I don't understand it. Understand it? Of course not. No one understands it. It's all very simple. It's just a projection of a 31-dimensional spectral space onto the three-dimensional color space that we all live in. <laughs> Maybe it's easier to think of it as, as I change a light source, I emphasize different parts of the spectrum. And as a result, the colors change with respect to each other. Let's take a look at this lighting booth again. I admit I kind of lied to you before when I said that this doesn't show metamerism and that it shows color inconstancy. Well, the obvious thing when you look at these is that the colors are inconstant between the three views, between the three different lighting types. But what you may not notice quite as readily is that there is examples here of metamerism. If I look at the pair of placards on the far left, we can see that there's a very good match. And let's just assume that the placards in the middle one are the same. And we see that there, again, it's a good match, not a perfect match, but under the uh, D50 lighting as opposed to the D65, it would appear that they don't match quite as well. And finally, on the far right, we see that under incandescent light, those two placards just plain don't match at all. That's metamerism. So we see that metamerism is when two objects match under one illuminant, but they don't match under another one. And I lied to you before when I said that that is metamerism. There's actually a second type of metamerism. There's two types of metamerism. The other type is when objects match for one observer, but not for a different observer. That's observer metamerism. That looks like a pretty good match to me. I don't know what you're talking about. It's a lousy match. Unfortunately, not all eyes are created equal. There's a number of reasons for that, but one of the biggest ones is probably age. Uh, as we get older, the lens in the eye tends to get yellower, which means that somebody who is older is looking through a pair of yellow sunglasses. And, of course, there's the customers that want to wear their sunglasses when they view things, which is just silly. It just seems like we've started something that has no ending. Yeah, Kirk, I could probably go on until Sodom and Gomorrah are destroyed, but uh, I got to go. So, happy metamorism, guys.